Hey guys, Darren here with another box review. This box that, that I'm reviewing is a box of 1992 All World. This is one of the, the less known card sets of the 90s because they only did one year of football. Now they weren't, they didn't only do football. They, they actually had been doing racing and boxing, but football was their, their attempt to get into the main market and their, this, you can tell that these cards came from the, um, came just after Desert Storm because when when we uh, did the first invasion of Iraq, the U.S., um, basically U.S. pride was, was kind of at an all-time high. So only after that could you get away with doing a card where it just has a big flag over the top, which is the, the only thing. They literally don't say the name of the company anywhere on the front of the card. And for a card company called All World, which you can see it listed here and here, I mean, it's really toned down. They were just totally pushing the American flag on these cards. And it's the whole point of the card. So it's a, it's a very unusual set on many different levels, but they only did one set for, for a uh, period for NFL cards. The packs I'm, I'm opening are the rack packs. So they, they come like this. There are 26 cards in each pack. Every pack has one insert. There are two insert sets. One comes in this form. The other is randomly inserted in regular packs. So that's basically kind of how it comes. And so this was the rack pack box that I opened. The, the cards, like, uh, like I showed you, it's very simple. It's just a thin little white band around the outside. The centering on these was really, really pretty mediocre. They have a big flag that goes either direction. So you have here fly, flying in reverse. And the, the sh flags, they, it looks like they may completely alternate. I'm not sure I'm missing some cards. But this, this is basically how it shows up card after card after card. So the card front is just this little box with the name, picture of the player. The pictures tended to be really good. I have to acknowledge that was, that was awesome. The back is a take on upper deck. Again, you got the flag is pretty much the most important mo part of the whole card. And right down here is where you can see the, uh, the all world logo. I I'm assuming it's coming in the AW and then that that's the only place it actually says what kind of card it is. They have the stats. Everything's really tight and the card number. Oh man, these are tough to read. Fortunately in every single pack, as you go through the cards in the pack, they go in a series. So you'll get, you know, card one, two, three, four, and then you'll get up to 63, four, five, and six. So thankfully when going through the, the packs, what I was doing, I started off looking at the pictures, but then I got so frustrated by the numbers that I started just flipping the cards over and getting the cards all in numerical order and doing groups of them so that I could order them later on without killing my eyes trying to read each individual card number. So it became more mechanical. And then at the end, I was able to sit back and look at the cards and appreciate them. Now I'll just cut, cut straight to the chase with I came within 32 cards of the set and the, that was, um, it was pretty decent because in terms of the doubles, uh, I got almost the same number of doubles as I got regular cards. So 32, you know, you're, you're going to expect that they're, you're not going to be getting all the way there. Um, but it was where I had a problem was late, late in the, uh, in the run. So let's see here, this is card 207. So let's get to card 200. All right, so it's a 300 and uh, 300 card set. 300 total? Uh, yeah, 300 even. So with the doubles, I have the first 200 and the last 200, which if, uh, if it doesn't show up here, put it back here. So that means that most of my doubles came just in the, in the last third of the set. And that was, that was frustrating because they were really, there were a lot of, of cards that were doubled, tripled. And so these are, you know, when you see two in a row like this, Jeff George, this is the second, third, fourth, second, third, fourth, second, third, fourth, second, third, fourth. So I got a lot of triples of cards in, in the box. And that's where it was frustrating because if you're, if you're going to get close, you want it at least to be a pretty even distribution. And while it's not nearly as bad as what upper deck was doing at about the same time, still it got very loaded in one section of, of the card set. So it wasn't quite as much fun otherwise as it could have been in terms of you kind of, you kind of felt the, um, the whole, uh, collation of the cards. Now for doubles, uh, before I get into the set, I'll show you the doubles. I got an Aikman, um, 
uh, Legends in the Making, Carl Pickens rookie card, and then I got a second and third Montana, second and third Emmett Smith, second, third, fourth uh, LT, the real LT, um, two extra Irvins, three extra Steve Youngs, three extra Dan Marinos, and then you get into the Legends cards. So I got one of each of the five Namus, one of each of the five Jim Browns, and then I got uh, Vince Lombardi, uh, Thorpe, Sayers, Tony Dorsett, and then we get into the inserts. So I'll get back to the inserts in a minute, but in the in terms of the doubles, those are the doubles I got, and then the rest of the cards of value in the set are an Emmett Smith in the making, Thurman in the making, uh, Jimmy Smith rookie card, one of the few, Tommy Maddox rookie card, one of the not quite as few, and then John Elway and uh, Jerry Rice. So you can see that I did not get Barry Sanders, that was the main card I did not get in, in any of these packs. But otherwise, it, it, did, uh, it did pretty well. So the card set starts off with Legends in the Making. So basically, superstars that are pretty young. And then, uh, so we're not talking about Elway and Marino and Montana. We're talking about Emmett Smith and Thurman Thomas. Then we have a series of rookies of a, a very forgettable rookie class, but they did have Jimmy Smith, Carl Pickens, and Tommy Maddox. So that was, that was pretty good. And then you have the veteran cards, and then after 260 cards, you have the five checklists. Three checklists for the main card set. And then you also have um, the uh, uh, checklist just for the rookies, which is repeated from, they appear here on the first set and they also get repeated here. And then you have a, rookie, uh, a set of just the players at the end of the set. And that's the key in this, in this box is, the set ends with, oh, keep these separate to keep things in order. The set actually ends with uh, a series of, of cards of veterans, or of legends. So you have five cards of Joe Namath, you have five cards of Jim Brown, and then you have random players. And these are, these are all legends, some more famous than others. And it's a really good mix of legends. So you got Gino Marchetti, uh, Tony Dorsett again, you got Leo Namalini, you got uh, Fangs Lambert, you've got um, this, not Jurgensen? Yeah, uh, Theismann. And then um, we've got Bobby Lane. Here we have um, that Franco Harris, no, John Stallworth. And then uh, Horning, yeah, Paul Horning, and Don Maynard. And so Actually, this is really kind of the big strength of the set is the last 35 cards are cards of legends, 25 or 27 uh, legends in the set, which was uncommon. The cards may not be very inspired, but it is a rare thing to see this many legends in the back in a set. So that was cool. And then also they had a, a randomly um, assorted card that shows the three big players that they're focusing on. So obviously Joe Namath, as we saw, and Jim Brown. And then also Desmond Howard was their big, big name. They advertised it a lot and they have autograph cards of all three of these players that are randomly inserted, um, numbered out of 1000. So Howard, Desmond Howard's rookie card, I think he had another rookie card, but that was the thing they were really banking on was this guy right here, Desmond Howard. So let's look at the insert sets. So like I said, there are two insert sets. This is the what essentially is the retail version, the rack pack version, and it has the flag at the top. Here they have gold stars and gold um, gold text down at the bottom with kind of a, a handwritten quality. You got Aikman, Namath, Gail Sayers, and Jim Thorpe. Those are the the five out of the, or the four out of the ten first ten that I got. And then rookies, which is Carl Pickens, Troy Vincent, Von Dunbar, and Terrell Buckley are the ones that I got in that. So I got four and four. So I got 40% uh, of that complete set. But in the, in the doubles, this is where it really got frustrating because I got another Aikman, another Namath, three uh, additional Gale Sayers, which as a Bears fan is cool, but I don't need three extra. I just need one. One extra Jim Thorpe one extra Carl Pickens, one extra Troy Vincent, and four Terrell Buckleys. So unfortunately, the big problem I had with this box is the fact that they had whole runs of cards that wouldn't get completely stacked up, but as you're going through, you keep seeing cards pop up and pop up and pop up. So there 
in the first portion of the of the card set I didn't get very many doubles I got a ton at the end and the inserts I didn't get anywhere near the set because I kept getting doubles and doubles and doubles so the collation was the big problem I had with these cards but but it is a really amazing card set to run into because of the fact that it is such a rare experience these cards are not the kinds of things you're hardly ever going to find because nobody knows that this set exists and nobody really cares with good reason but the pictures are really impressive i love that quality the flag you know no matter what you think about the about the flag you got to admit it's way too big on this card it's just too dominant now the card back is actually pretty cool i like the way that it's laid out it'd be nice if you could read it i think you need a telescope to do so but otherwise these these cards are these cards are underappreciated because of the fact that they're forgotten they are one of these sets that just nobody knows about and that's the fun of discovering them is the fact that you're literally discovering them uh, I wish I could really go more into it, but there's not a lot else. It was a card company that made one year, uh, a run one year at making football cards. It didn't catch on. The card set was a, a quirky idea, but not a great uh, creation. The collation didn't work out too well. The inserts weren't all that inspiring. It was, it was an opportunity that didn't realize itself and they, the cards themselves don't have the ability, based, based on the simplistic design, they don't have the ability to stand out and be distinguished. So if you get the chance and you're curious, this is really interesting to run into. That is, that's the key. And like I said, the centering here, most of the cards are poorly centered. So this is one of those where uh, don't expect for the cards to be coming out pristine every single time. The corners will all be good. The, the ink is going to be clear. The detailing is going to be good. It's just that the centering is going to be an interesting exploration card by card. Other than that, I believe that's all that I, I've got to say about it. So I, I did have fun. It was very, it was an interesting experience. Um, so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's something I'm glad I'm able to bring to your attention. So thank you guys for watching.